On this episode, Christian is especially proud. Yes, we are very impressed. Isn't that great? Isn't that just great? I love it. Yes, but you need to stay focused. It's a V! Mmm, finishing up the coffee. Hi, I'm Christian. This is Lazy Devs Academy. Welcome to our um, episode. What is the episode? 47 of the advanced schmuck tutorial. Yeah, advanced stuff takes a lot of time. And one of the things that really takes a lot of time is interface. Programming interface it just takes a whole bunch of time. So if you have a game that doesn't have a lot of interfaces, like a shmup, then you might think we could get around without having to deal with a whole bunch of interface stuff, but ah, uh, the interface always gets you. Uh, we're working on our schedule editor and there's a whole bunch of interface happening here because we want to have like a really nice and a comfortable way of editing our, our, our schedule. And yeah, yeah, this takes a bit of a lot of time, but uh, you know, we created like this drop down menu that I really like. And now we want to, um, want to make these buttons work. We want to make those buttons actually do things. Uh, so let's try to do that. Right, so first of all, um, there's like type, move, copy and delete. Um, the, uh, let's start with the most simplest one. I think deleting is probably going to be the, the, the most easiest one. It's gonna, let's call it del n. Uh, del n. <laughs> um, we can actually give all of these commands. We're going to go um, uh, copy n. Well, technically it's not an enemy, it's a schedule, but you know what I'm saying. Um, move n. Um, the type thing is going to be a bit of a question mark right now. Let's let's think about this a bit later. For now, I wanted to uh, work with this delete. And first of all, let's go in an update function, and let's make sure that we actually um, that the buttons that that we are intact uh, the, the but that we can do stuff with the button, right? So here is um, I didn't actually copy this one out, but I should. Um, I want the X button to do something, uh, and then return. Oh, actually, I did that. Oh no, that's update map. <laughs> ah, copy, paste. That's not that difficult. After in hindsight, um, always more important to do the return after we interact with the button, so we don't execute the rest of the update function that might then interact with a different mode that we're not in right now. So now, if I click here. I can interact with stuff, but obviously that stuff is currently not programmed in. So let's let's program in del n. We actually have a function for that, uh, do button function, where all the buttons reside. Else if b dot cmd equals del n, then we can actually add the other commands in here as well. Copy n. and move n. Good. Del n. Um, let me check real quick if we're saving the sure. We're don't, not saving the sure. Um, we, we know which, which thing we're editing. We're actually saving this, but um, you know, just in case, just in case we're gonna do CMD sure, CMD sure equals. This is a bit redundant. I I, 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 I fully admit this is a bit redundant, but um, it keeps the it keeps kind of like the logic. We might reuse the code for something else, and then that's good that that we're getting the information from the actual button. Mm. There's gonna be a type here. Uh, yeah, the type thing is, we're gonna to get to that when we're gonna to get to that. Um, for now, let us uh, here go in here and we're gonna go delete uh, sched b dot uh, cmd sure. That is gonna be basically it. And then we have to um, go back to we have to go back to, we have to go back um, to the menu mode. Ah, something like this. So we're gonna delete this, we're gonna draw the map, update map. 
And we're going to set the um, draw function to draw map, update function to update map, and we're going to refresh the map just for good measure. And then uh, we're going to return from that update function in our update function. That should, should fix those problems. Let's try that. Bam. Oh man, so see, I can now delete individual enemies. This is good. Oh, this feels correct, man. So here I can also delete an enemy now here. Yes. <sighs> All right, so that's deleting done. All right, something I wanted to also do is um, something I don't like right now is I, 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 you kind of committed to interacting with the enemy. <laughs> you cannot get out of here. You cannot get out here. So let us let us make it so that we can actually get out of that <laughs> drop down menu. <laughs> Little detail that is maybe forgotten very quick, very easily. But um, uh, yeah, let let's do that. So first of all, when we press the O button, I want to return to the normal edit mode. That is going to be this stuff. Yeah, we're not going to do any button stuff. We're just we're going to just like do this or R, when we press the right button, mouse button, that would be also good. So R, no, C L K, K R. If you press with the right button, then we're also gonna uh, go back to the map mode. And then also I want to maybe if I click somewhere and it's not a button, that means I clicked, you know, Let's try this, by the way. Let's try this if this works. So if I do this and then I, I can cancel out, that's good. I can also right mouse. Mm. Oh, see, haha. <laughs> there was a bug there all along. Oh, that's not good. We have to, we have to, we have to remember this. Yeah, but now I can get out of this mode. That's good. Okay, so um, yeah, we have. There was a mistake here that was supposed to be an R and it was an L. Oh well. Right, so now clicking with the right mouse button or pressing the um, the circle button in on Pico 8, um, that gets us out of the menu. But also, again, I want to, if I click on something and I didn't hit anything, then uh, I also want to maybe um, get out. So like if, let's do this mouse hit thing back again. So we're gonna do, a, oh, there is this already there. Okay, never mind. Yeah, it's already there, okay. So if mouse, uh, mouse hit equals true, and then we're gonna interact, do interaction. Um, and then we're gonna go if mouse hit, if not mouse hit and CLKL, then and we're gonna repeat this code. It's code repetition, I don't like it, but um, again, this is, this is just an editor. It doesn't have to be token efficient. Right, so now if I click here and I click somewhere else, it gets me out of that menu. And it's important that the delete function is the one that takes a lot of presses. It's kind of like the one that is furthest away. I have to move the cursor the most deleted because you don't want to accidentally delete stuff. Good, right, so now the next step is not quite as obvious. We have to move stuff, but we also have the the type stuff, and both of these are a bit of a. Let us start maybe with a type. I think that's going to be a, maybe a, maybe a bit simpler. So with the type stuff, I want to do the following. I want to maybe have like a button that goes to the left, right? Something like this, and then let's go. Yeah, something like this. I want I want I want something like this. A button that that looks like this, right? So now I can go left and right, right? I can just like change this to a different enemy type by clicking left or on a left and a right button. The problem with that is th that is not how our menu works. I mean, we could do that maybe here with a with a cursor keys with a with a buttons uh, with a keyboard buttons, but we cannot really do that with a mouse. Or maybe we can. We we totally gonna do that. We totally gonna do that because I I was thinking about maybe creating like three individual buttons. And so you can, that allows you to have like the mouse interaction because there are three different buttons. It's going to be a button that goes left and that button goes right, right, and the, the center text here. But now I'm thinking, who cares? Who cares? So 
And that's gonna be cell sked square bracket two. Okay, now we have to format this correctly. So with the leading zero as we had pre before, we're gonna use this function here to stir n, to stir n, um, sales get to, uh, let's go with a leading zero. So now there's a zero in here, okay. Right, and then the command is gonna be, uh, let's call it type, and type, <laughs> whatever. I want to um, save the schedule button here. Uh, right, so if I click on this with a mouse, what I want to do is like if, yeah, I'm not sure what, what to do here, uh, question mark. Um, first of all, let us do um, the update function. Let's just make it sure that this actually works with the keyboard, right? Um, so we have this here. So the reason I kept this around is because I was thinking that maybe we're gonna have maybe like the three buttons and those will be maybe interactable with the cursor keys as well. But now I'm kind of like, we can hard code this maybe. So we're gonna go like, let's go cur x equals one. And then we're gonna go if hashtag menu occur, no, if cur y, Cur x dot cmd equals, is it, is it cmd? I always forget the, the names I come up with. It, it's cmd, right? yeah, yeah. Okay, so if that is, if the command is copy n, no, not copy n, n type, then, so we're gonna interact with the, with the schedule directly here. Right, so if we're gonna press left, we're gonna decrease the type. If we're gonna press right, we're gonna increase the type. Um, we're gonna get the schedule from the from the button. And again, we technically don't need this because we have the cell sketch. So, but. Maybe we're gonna read it later on. So I, I just wanna just, I'm gonna program it like this. Um, so we're gonna to get to the schedule that we are editing. So we press this to the left, we're gonna go sked, uh, sked. So entry number one is the time that we're spawning an enemy at and entry number two is the type. So we're gonna decrease type by one. If we press left and if we press right, we're gonna increase it by one. Ah, double equals. Okay, so if we click on this, it totally works. The only problem, <laughs> it make a mistake, it totally works. Um, we're gonna make sure that, um, yeah, we're gonna sanitize this input, so we're gonna make sure that um, sketch two equals mid, one sketch two hashtag um, nlib right is it nlib and so we want to make sure that we cannot select an enemy that doesn't exist uh, yeah and that's gonna be it let's try that so here selecting we can totally turn an enemy into a bigger enemy now Isn't that great? I, I love it. It's so good. Um, I'm thinking about maybe drawing the enemies back to front. We're gonna talk, uh, think about this later on. Um, I wanna focus now on this. <laughs> Stay focused, Christian. Um, I want to maybe put this on the very top, tippity top. And then, because th this interaction with this button is fundamentally different than the other buttons. So I'm thinking about something like this. Right, so you, you cannot press X on that button. Because I don't want to be pressing X and the button, in, I want the, this button interaction to be only with um, the do button type interaction to be reserved for the mouse interaction because we're gonna do some weird stuff with the mouse interaction. <laughs> don't worry, it's gonna be, it's gonna be fine. Okay, so here, 
Um, I want to see refresh drop. That's the important part here. So we're going to press on this end type button. And now I want to local click X. Let's call it CX equals drop X minus mouse X. Because if I press the left edge of that button, then I want the number to decrease. And if I press the right edge, I want the number to increase. It's a bit of a weird interaction with the button, but whatever, it's, it's fine. It's going to be fine. Um, how wide is this um, is this drop down box? Uh, we said it had five characters, right? Because delete has five characters. Let's calculate. So delete, no, it's at six characters. So it's like six times uh, four characters plus one, right? So like 25, 25 is this the correct number? Mm, so we're gonna say like, that's how many pixels from the left edge of the button we clicked on the button. And then we're gonna go if uh, CX, CX is smaller equals 12, then else end. I'm gonna go debug one equals left. And then we're gonna debug one equal uh, right. Just want to make sure that this, this interaction works correctly before we proceed. So this is left. Oh, it stays left. Okay. <laughs> right. We need to go the other way around. I made that a mistake earlier as well. So this is left, this is right. Okay, that's better. Okay, so now we're gonna get that code that changes that code that changes the type of the enemy from the update to drop function. This code, we're gonna grab that and we're just gonna dump it into the into the button. That's that's all we're gonna do. Bam. It's just this is gonna be left, and this the when you press the right button is gonna be right. And otherwise, everything stays exactly the same. Like this. Uh, here we can do like B. We should be we should be good. Let's try that. Totally works. It totally works. It's so good. <laughs> so here you would be able to switch to different enemies. Now we have only two enemies, uh, but yeah, so far so good. And now you have to be brave. I have to be brave. <laughs> We're gonna have to add the move function, the the way to move this this a, a thing, an enemy. And I think for that we're gonna need a whole new. Uh, and, and yet another mode. It's we're gonna go into like a move mode when we, when we click on a move. This is what I'm planning, and that move will just make every all the UI disappear. So I can concentrate on the enemy, and then I can press the cursor keys to move the enemy, or maybe even the mouse. We're gonna see. We're gonna see. We're gonna see about the mouse. Um, so yeah, we're gonna create a new update function. We're gonna call it move. We're gonna create a new draw function. Um, actually, yeah, we, we want to have a new uh, draw function. I'm sorry. Move. I'm not sure if we're gonna have, I mean, yeah, we're gonna have a refresh, whatever. Again, it's, it's, it's good to have the options for that. We're gonna have a refresh move. Uh, and in the update function, we're gonna go refresh move. Um, now, if we're gonna press any button in that function, uh, either this or this, then we're gonna return to our regular scheduled uh, draw map because it's gonna be a bit of a, it's gonna be a bit of an odd thing. 
Um, yeah, and then let, let's make it so that we switch to that mode when we when we click on move. So we're gonna do this. Um, move and draw. Move, update. Move, refresh. Move. Uh, by the way, if when I refresh, move, did I clear? I did not clear the menu. Okay, let's try that. Okay, we are now in this move mode, but we don't see anything um, because the move mode is not working. But can we get out of the move mode? We can, we can get out of the move mode. Okay, good. Okay, so now let us make it so that the move mode actually moves our, our, uh, our, Think uh, left, right, like this. Whew, I got a little bit interrupted there. Um, for you, it might seem as if no time has passed at all, but for me, whole different story. Anyway, let's get back to this. So um, the only thing that's left to do is we have to kind of like just move this um, the schedule around the the spawning point of the schedule. Uh, we have to look up where we um, have saved the currently selected schedule, that's cell sched. Uh, and then we're just going to move this around. So cell sched, um, the vertical position is 4, so minus equal 1 to move it up. Cell sched uh, 4 plus 1 to move it down. <clears throat> and left and right is going to be the entry number 3 in that schedule entry uh, left is going to be minus one and right is going to be plus one so this is the way we're going to move the spawn point of this scheduled spawn event so i'm going to click here move and now we can move this around isn't that great isn't that just great i love it maybe also because moving around with the cursor keys is a little bit not that great. Um, so something we could maybe also do is we can do uh, if um, CLKL, then if we click on the left mouse button, then we're going to set uh, cell sket 4 and cell sket 3 to mouse X and mouse Y. And I don't think that will work. Uh, not quite. Um, but we can figure out maybe how to make it work. Let's try that. Um, not double equals, single equals. All right, so let's go here, move. And now when we click, now first of all, it, we don't, it doesn't actually spawn where we click. And that's because we have to do like a minus uh, X scroll. Let's try this again, move. And now it it's, it it moves, it moves correctly. Um, but you can see it. We can move the spawning point. That's not necessarily where the enemy is, right? That's that's this problem that we're modifying a spawning location, and that's not where the enemy currently is on the screen. This is a bit of a problem. We're gonna have to uh, um, fix this later on a little bit. Something I want to also maybe also add to this move option is the ability to move sideways or like the, the feature that we're moving sideways. We're gonna to have to do the X scroll here. Uh, the, this one, this code, this X scroll code, X scroll code, I wanna edit, get this out and uh, put it in here. Let's try that. Uh, move, so now X scroll is, is affecting this. This is good. So this gives us more, more of a range to move the things around. Um, and you can see that we are kind of having troubles here, right? It doesn't go all the way to the edge. And that is the problem is that when we're drawing the lines, we are kind of like not drawing them quite correctly. Let's, let me fix this real quick. All right, so here is <clears throat> where we're drawing those schedule lines. Um, so I put it on 127. That This would be correct um, if the screen was just 128 pixels wide, but because of the X scroll, the screen might be wider than 127. Uh, 
let's just put a ton at 50. <laughs> it's fine, 150, it's good. And I'm gonna do the same thing here. Uh, 128. Let's just go 256. Why, why not? Why not just double? Because it get it's get clipped by the screen anyway. So we can just make it like really, really, really wide. Yeah. Let's go 250 on this one as well. Doesn't matter. Uh, I think vertically it it makes no difference, but whatever. Just so it's very clear. Yeah. See now the lines don't end anymore. So we can, uh, yeah, we can position things as we want. Cool, cool, cool. There is a... One more thing. One more thing, guys. So we can position, we can position, you know, we can position the, the spawning location as we want. But you know what would be cool? If we could also shift the timing on the, on this, on the, on the spawning, right? It would be cool if you could shift the timing as well. Let's do that as well. But first, before we do that, maybe I want to do a little bit of a info box at the bottom. Uh, I don't like how I don't like how we don't have any data. We just like it's just all like in this floaty space of the screen. I want to maybe sometimes be like I want to put it exactly at a certain location. So I want to maybe draw the coordinates at which we are at which the spawning location is. I want to draw them to the screen. So we're gonna to go to the draw, and then um, yeah, uh, let's put it below the menu. I'm gonna go do a BG print. And then we're gonna put that DG print on 920, about 120. And the color is gonna be, yeah, let's put it just like color 13. Let's just try it like this. And it's gonna be X dot dot <coughs> sales kit three dot dot Y dot dot scales get four. And dot dot um sc scroll dot dot sales get one right so we have all the information about the spawning location exactly at the bottom of the screen let's see how that looks like Ooh, i like it i like it immediately so you can al already see that scrolling the scroll is is all wrong here but we can oh we can reposition it <laughs> we can reposition it but the, but you don't see the 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 enemy anymore that's funny okay let's get out oh right clicking doesn't get us out oh we should fix that um or click r right so now we'll be moving this right clicking gets us out cool so now you can see the value is changing at the bottom of the screen i like this very much um now it would be really cool if we could like you have to you have to scroll value we're spawning this at scroll value so we can move this around but we cannot shift this to scroll value it would be nice if we could shift the scroll value and we absolutely can add this functionality so we're gonna go um we have to figure out what kind of button to press for that um i think because usually wasd is also a way to move things around so let's make it w and s um so if key equals w then And if key double, uh, equals S then, and then for that, we're gonna shift the, we're gonna shift the spawning location. So I'm thinking up means we want to move it up. So that means it spawns later. And uh, down means we wanna move it down. So it spawns earlier is what I'm thinking. Let's try that. So you can see there's something weird happening, right? We can sh move the character, like the, the our, our enemy, we can move it up and down by shifting the spawning timing or by moving it up and down on the, you know, where exactly it spawns. The, lo the vertical location of the enemy currently is controlled by two things. They're kind of overlapping and you're not quite sure what is causing what. Um, but this now, well, with this, these abilities, we are now 
uh, have the ability to make an actual V formation, not the one like this that, that didn't look correct in the game, but an actual V formation. So let us maybe try to do this. Ah, but before we do, there's mm, there's one last thing um, I almost forgot. Um, so we can now move things. That's really cool. Um, I want to next. I want next to um, copy. We don't have the ability to copy. There's like this function copy. I want to add this ability now. So look at this. Uh, let me look at where this uh, function is. There we go. Copy n right. So when we copy things, I want to immediately switch to a movement mode. So that's already good. Um, but we're going to go add. Um, hmm, we cannot add. We can add. We're going to go add sked. OK, this is how we're going to do local new sked equals. So we're going to create a new sked. And that is going to be we're going to fill in the data from the schedule that is associated with the currently selected the currently selected enemy. I think these are the four values. This is the yeah. These are four values. Okay. So we're going to create this new schedule. And then we're going to add this new schedule to this schedule thing. And a new schedule is going to be, uh, no, cell sked. Cell sked equals new sked. I just want to make sure that this is the name of cell sked. Yeah, that should be, that should be, the, that should do the trick. Uh, and then we immediately start moving this around. So let's try this. I'm going to save this, run. Okay, so let's say I'm going to copy this enemy here. I'm going to do copy. Now we're in movement mode and now you can see I can move this around. I can copy an enemy and move it at the position. So now I have a copy of this enemy. Bam. And this basically wraps up I think most of the basic uh, schedule editor interactions. There's obviously going to be probably a lot of bugs and a lot of tweaks that we want to do uh, eventually. But for now I think this is the, the furthest we can go uh, with the current um, with the current stuff, so let me just fix some of the scheduling happening here. We can now define and delete all of those enemies, and you can see, yeah, we added a little bunch of steps in between, right? It's no longer as easy as just as, as clicking somewhere. We oh. Uh, oh no, I should not press escape. <laughs> see, that's maybe we should do like a backup or something, uh, or maybe we should make it. I don't know if you can prevent the escape from being pressed. It would be interesting to find out. But yeah, I wanted to def definitely delete all of those enemies here. And so the thing I want to do now is, and this is now the thing that, that, that I was kind of like aiming at, I want to create like this V formation, but for reals, right? I don't want to be there's this V shape to be caused by an offset in spawning. I want them to be actually spawning all at the same time, but like at slightly different positions. So th that V actually comes in. Let's try that. Um, so we're going to delete these in the back here. I'm going to actually uh, export. Okay. I'm going to now copy this and now I can move this here. Now I'm going to copy this. I'm going to move it here. And as you can see, I'm just moving the spawning location. I'm not moving the timing. The timing stays at 71. So these enemies will all spawn at the same time, just like slightly offset in position. That is the, that is the trick, that's the trick. And that gives us hopefully our beautiful beautiful, beautiful V formation. We probably need to undo at some point. I'm guessing we're going to need to undo. All right, we have a beautiful V formation, and then I'm going to I'm, I'm going to actually see see they're all spawning at 71. These are all of the enemies that are spawning. They're all spawning at 71 at that at that moment, at the same time, but but at different positions off screen, and they will all fly in together in sync, and we will get our beautiful V. Let's see if we can actually see that V in the game. Uh, exported this, uh, then 
I'm gonna load cow schmuck run. It's coming, it's coming. It's a V! <laughs> <laughs> Exploded! I got blasted! I got blasted! <laughs> it's a V! Oh man, they're shooting a lot of bullets. <laughs> oh yes! Huge, huge W, huge double V. Well, that is certainly a win in my book. Um, yeah, maybe we're gonna do some tweaks. And if you have ideas of how to tweak the schedule editor, do let me know. Uh, we added a bunch of steps and some things are a little bit awkward, like doing a copy is a little bit awkward. You have to click three times and then you have to do the thing. Yeah, not ideal. Also, obviously, um, it's kind of weird that you can't really position the enemies with a mouse, right? Like if you, if you move things around, then when you click something, then an enemy will be down here. I would expect the enemy to be at where I click. Uh, but the reason I don't want to do that right now is I, it's kind of like, it's, it's, a, it's a feature that is very much tied to our uh, ability to predict the position of an enemy to kind of like simulate the brain of the enemy, which we are not doing at all right now. So that will probably change once we get into the brains. Speaking of which, let's go to the doggy zone. Yeah, the doggy zone. I made a really big V here. So this kind of like wraps up our first go at the schedule editor. So now we're gonna move on to one of the most difficult parts of this wall shmup thing of this wall of shmups we are going to have to create a way to generate brains to generate enemy behavior different kinds of enemy behavior and there's different ways of doing this but i think before we um, approach this subject and before we come up with a system of how to generate enemy behavior uh, something i want us to do is to do some research so here's a bit of an unusual uh, doggy zone I want you to pick a shmup, any kind of shmup. Should be ideally maybe a commercial shmup. I want you to play that shmup. I want you to play one level, one level all the way through to the end. And I want you to write down all of the enemy types that you see throughout this first level. All of the enemy types, every single enemy type, just like a list of enemy types. And I want you to draw the kind of path they're describing on the screen and maybe even what kind of shots they're shooting. I want you to create like a bestiary of enemy types for one level of a shmup, which is doable. You, most people can play through one level of a shmup, right? Uh, and I want you maybe, if there's some special behavior that you found interesting, I want you to write this down. I want you to observe and analyze what a shmup looks like, what different enemies in a shmup look like, how they behave. So we can then create maybe a system that can replicate similar behavior. Okay, that's the goal for the doggy zone. And yes, I'm gonna move on now to this part, my favorite part, where I will say a big thank you, a huge shout out. Thank you so much for supporting this show on coffee.com slash lazydevs. A lot of people are doing so, and I'm very grateful that they're doing so. And if you are not doing it yet, coffee.com slash lazydevs is the address to do that. Now, I also wanted to read a comment, and this, mm, this is a juicy comment. I want to maybe read this out now. This is by Loki Striker, who recently we featured on, on, in, in this segment here with a beautiful progress on an amazing schmuck. Loki Striker asked in a Discord, I asked people to ask me questions, and Loki Striker delivered. It seems that even in terms of new form schmups, not space invaders, we have a whole range of different ideas and evolutions uh, of the how. Clearly, you can see a move towards bigger bullet density and slower enemy bullets in recent design. But as we are creating a shmup somewhat secured of modern sensitivities, navigating the space of designing a shmup feels rather complicated. Man, that's that's a wordy, <laughs> wordy question. I've had the experience of already making a small shmup uh, of this form, where 
where I did a lot of the retro feel, such as bullet limit, fast enemy bullets, power loss on death, and linear scrolling. Those ideas coexist well enough together, even if you start using a bit higher bullet density like a modern entries. Now as I'm trying to design another, one that pairs up with, the, with this tutorial, it clearly falls more in a space in between uh, the bullet hell and retro, yet I mostly feel like I'm just imitating uh, and remixing the couple of examples I'm following that uh, fall in that space as well. I guess then the question would be, how do we approach designing a shmup without merely imitating? Or another way to put it would be, what axis of design should we pay the most attention to when designing a shmup, such as score, formations, bullet density, etc. Speed. Yeah. Mm. Talking about a meaty question right there. Uh, obviously not something I can just like answer in a couple of sentences at the very end. I think there like the, the, there's like a desire to innovate when you're creating something, especially like in a well-established genre, you're coming in and like, I have some fresh ideas. I'm gonna just like, mm, I'm gonna make you make you second guess whatever you thought was, uh, was, was right. I, I think that's cool. I think that's really cool. And I'm also driven by this motivation as well. Um, but also something that we should always forget. It's not bad. It's not necessarily bad to be just merely imitating. I think creating like a good copy of something is not bad for many reasons. First of all, when you have any kind of innovation, that innovation is always or quite often grounded in an understanding of existing rules. People will see the new stuff because they're already familiar with how st stuff used to be. And you can also imitate, you can make the innovation seem extraordinary because they are different from what was there before. So you kind of have, have this uh, already existing stuff as kind of like the scaffolding in which you can create your innovations. And quite often when you have innovative stuff, it, it, there's the innovative part is just, just like a tiny little bit within a grand thing that is kind of very established and very traditional. So if you want to have the innovation, you also kind of already have to have the imitation already uh, kind of like as, a, as a groundwork. And also my experience is that I, I'm not usually not too afraid about creating something that's derivative because quite often in the process of me trying to copy something, I will change things around. Inevitably, there's gonna be opportunities to make changes and I will go for those opportunities usually. I will almost accidentally create innovation, changes, little changes to the formula. And I will make the copy mine by default. I feel like innovation quite often is all about going through the process of imitation and then recognizing and seizing opportunities to make changes to the formula. And the funny thing is that quite often when people talk about how they came up with some innovative stuff, if you talk about them, what did you thought about, about making this, they were quite often clueless. They were just like, oh, I just like did, did something I didn't thought it was a big deal. But then later on, when people played it, when people or when people experienced it, they were suddenly surprised by how different it is. There's like this Daft Punk song, you know, Giorgio, where he says like, oh, I put the click on the 33rd track. I knew that could be a sound of the future, but I didn't realize how much the impact would be. You know, it's kind of like this. Those small unassuming changes can accidentally lead to innovative developments, um, but it's not necessarily something that you can plan ahead. I think it's a good advice to just leave yourself open for that. And looking at what Loki Strike is doing, I don't think, I don't think he needs to be worried about that. All right, we are finished with the first pass on our schedule editor. Next time around, brains. See you next time around, guys. Bye bye.